everybody. This is Brother Josh, and I want to share with you today something that the Lord has given me, and I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is of the Lord, uh, and I think it's something that I ought to share with all the my subscribers and YouTube viewers out there, and this is something that's got a little weight to it, and uh, so just listen very closely. You know, I, I'm not going to make any excuses or apologize for what I say here today. I know this is from the Lord. And you take what I say here today and you just do with it what you will. Prayerfully do with it with what you will. But I had a dream about two weeks ago. And this dream was concerning our president. And I want to get into what happened there because I believe the Lord was speaking to me uh, about some things that are going to happen in the future. And so if you would give me your undivided attention. Now, before I go into the dream, I want to uh, pref preface this with something to kind of help you better understand what happens in the dreams. I need to tell you what a tongues and interpretation is real, real briefly. Uh, God, when he poured out the Holy Spirit, gave gifts unto men. And these spiritual gifts that God gave unto men was for the edifying and building up of the church. And there's a particular gift called tongues and interpretation, where a person will speak out a tongues in a supernatural language, a language that is not given, uh, excuse me, not learned at their mother's knee or studied out of a book. It is supernaturally given by the Holy Spirit. And then someone will interpret that, and then the church will receive edification from it. They will, they will be built up. They will be uh, corrected. They will be, they will be, you know, helped in their walk with God. And so this happens in that dream, and I want you to understand that that uh, there is a prophecy that goes forth in the dream concerning the president, and this is the situation in which it happens. So, let me uh, tell you the dream. All right. So, as I was dreaming, I was sitting on a long couch against a wall, and I saw President Biden at the end of this long couch. He was dressed in his blue suit, and he was putting either paper or clothes into a suitcase, briefcase, or a box. I'm not sure what it was, but it was something brown and square. And as he was putting this in the box, he looked over to me and asked me this question. Should we allow tongues to be used in this administration? Now, when he said that, he said it half jokingly and half seriously. And I myself felt like in the dream that I was a spiritual advisor to the president. That was my role in this particular administration. And I really didn't know what to say. There was myself and another person in the room. I did not see who the person was, but they were standing to my left. Uh, the president was standing to my right. <clears throat> After he says that to me, he walks over in front of me to a chair up and to my left and was doing basically the same thing, putting something white, papers, clothes, I really don't know what, into a box. And then I stood up, and when I stood up, the anointing of God hit me, and I gave out a tongue. The tongue was not very long, but I gave that tongue out. And when I gave that tongue out, it immediately got the president's attention. He turned around and looked at me, and then I started to prophesy. And this is what I said. And this is the Spirit of the Lord speaking through me. I have told you what to do, but you have refused to do it. You know what to do, but you haven't done it. And if you do not do what I have told you to do, then I will deal with you. And that's what was said in this, this interpretation. And when I was saying this to the president, he, his eyes got really big. It looked like his pupils were dilated. His, his mouth was kind of open. 
in awe as I was saying this, and there was a fear and awe and an anger also in him. I don't know how I knew that. I just knew that in my dream. And he was disturbed by this prophecy and he left out of the room. Now, I come back into the room at a later point, And when I came back into the room, I felt kind of apprehensive about coming in there because I knew this did not sit well with him. And I come back into the room and he was wearing a light green, like a older general's outfit. It did not necessarily look like an American general's uh, outfit, but it was a light green general's outfit with gold embellishments on it and gold stars on the shoulders. And he was sitting in the floor with a child and they were playing. I'm not, I don't really cannot see what they were playing, but in front of them, there was cars or trains or figurines. There was something that they were playing with in the floor. And once again, there was the presence of that person there. I could not see his face, but just standing there to my left. And I walk in and I sit down on the couch and they're playing. The president sits up, he does not know I'm there, and he walks over to the couch and he picks up a coat. And as he's picking up the coat, uh, I say to him, you know that was God speaking to you, referring to the past thing that happened. You know this. And I said, what are you not doing? And he's kind of sort of ignoring me. He's looking around. He's trying to avoid the conversation. He's making excuses. Uh, people keep coming up to him, trying to get his attention, trying to, trying to get him to go. And finally, I get his attention. And he looks at me and I say this, you know that is God speaking to you. What are you not doing that you should be doing? You know it is God speaking to you. And finally, he listens to me. And when he listens to me, it's as if what I say hits his heart and he becomes fearful and almost crying, and then the dream ends. And so that's what I want to get to you. This was my dream. Now, I'm not going to go into some deep interpretation of the dream, but there are a few points that I want to bear out to you that are just blatantly obvious. Before, before I say this, I, I want you to know that even though Joe Biden says that he is a, a, a godly man, a, a Catholic is what he, what he calls himself. Friend, his lifestyle and his beliefs are contradictory to what a Christian is, okay? And so when he says that he is a Christian or that he is a Catholic, you really gotta take that with a grain of salt, okay? Uh, he's a Marxist. He's a globalist. He supports the homosexual agenda. He is pro-abortion. That is pro, he is for the murdering of babies. He says he's Catholic. And, and let, me, uh, let me read something to you uh, that the Daily Mail put out not long ago. Uh, it, Biden uh, went to a church here in America, a Catholic, and he, I guess, attended mass. And it says Biden's church visit came after Catholic bishops took a step towards preventing him receiving communion because of his abortion stance. Biden said this, that's a private matter, and I don't think that's going to happen. The president told reporters Friday at the White House. Supporters of the measure said a strong rebuke of Biden was needed because his recent actions protecting and expanding the abortion access. So we see that even the Catholic Church is now in opposition, or the majority of the Catholic Church is now in opposition to Joe Biden because of his stance on abortion. So, you know, Biden's presidency is illegitimate. Biden is an ungodly president, but that does not mean that God does not speak to ungodly leaders. 
Uh, we know that in Daniel 2.47 that God spoke to Nebuchadnezzar in a dream. And that in Pharaoh, excuse me, in Genesis 41, uh, 25, God spoke to Pharaoh in a dream. And Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. So this is what I believe, that God has revealed himself to Biden and has given him a command and Biden is not obeying that command. God has given Biden a period of time to repent and obey, and if not, God is going to deal with him. Now, let me give you the definition of that word deal. To take action with regard to someone or something. So, understand that God has given Joe Biden a command. Joe Biden knows this command. Joe Biden is not acting upon the command of God. He's not being obedient. And God is giving Joe Biden a space of time. Whatever that space of time is, I can't tell you. But he's given him a space of time to repent. That means to change his ways and to do what God has told him to. But if he doesn't, God is going to deal with Joe Biden. Now, let me read to you 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. And this is... Uh, the Bible, speaking to us believers, this is Paul writing to Timothy. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So, I got my dream message out to you, what I know the Lord has given to me. And this is what I ask, is that we need to pray for Joe Biden. We need to pray that he will repent of the wrong way that he is going, that he would be obedient to God so that America can lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And we also pray that if Joe Biden will not do this, that God will deal with Joe Biden when God sees fit. When God says that period of time is, uh, has expired, if, if Joe Biden has not uh, changed, if he's not repented, if he's not been obedient to the Lord, then we pray, Lord, deal with Joe Biden. Listen, when God judges a person or when God takes action against a person, it is always right. It is always just because God never does anything wrong. You must understand that. And so I just want to tell you that we need to be praying for the president. We need to be praying for our government. We need to be praying for law enforcement and our military. We need to be praying for our country. And I did, a, I did a sermon not long ago, and if you've not listened to it, it's called Plague and Prophecy, and it's an urgent message. And I, I ask that you go and listen to that, and it will help you understand a little more about what's going on in this country. But most of all right now, what we need is the church to repent and to get in a right spot with God and start to move toward the will of God in their lives. And when we do this in a country, amen, then the country itself starts to move in a right direction because the country is made up of people. And so let's come before God. Let's give prayer to him. Let's pray for Joe Biden. Let's pray for the church and let's pray for this country in these uncertain times that we live in. And so that's my message today. And this is Brother Josh saying goodbye.